give everyone a chance for their windows to open up. Check that they can hear, and then we will get started. All right, everyone should be connected. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's uh, webinar from SolidWorks on Composer for Technical Documentation. Uh, my name is Joelle Guinette. I'm the Territory Sales Manager for Eastern Canada, starting in Ontario, going to uh, through to the Maritimes. And uh, this morning, we will be talking about technical documentation and, uh, and in particular, our solution, SolidWorks Composer. When we uh, present SOLIDWORKS solution overall with people, we talk about a number of things. One of them is streamlining your development process. The traditional type of process that people have is you do one step and then you take that information and then you can go to your next step in your process, your design development. Then you can take the information that you've created from there and then it can be passed on to the next step because they need your information so they're waiting for your stuff. And a perfect example for this is you've done your design, your electrical, your mechanical design, and uh, you need to wait to have a prototype so that you can then take pictures of your product so that you can then populate your technical documentation with actual pictures um, and diagrams that you, you've created uh, and that you can create your technical documentation afterwards. So this is the technical process where everything is very serial, very one way, one after another. Uh, steps. So one of the goals at SolidWorks is to offer you tools that first of all are going to make everything that you do quicker, more productive, um, get you better results, but also to condense that and to get your steps to be more in parallel than in series so that you can do things at the same time, other groups don't have to wait for all of the information all the time, and at the end of the day, obviously, this saves your company in time, cost, um, hopefully improves the quality of the products that you're, uh, that you're doing or the quality of the documentation that you're coming out with and, and giving you more time for innovation. Technical documentation is a great example of how we do this. Um, the other topic that we, we, we bring up in certain uh, sessions that we do live and, and over the web is the idea of reusing that rich 3D data that you create. So each and every one of your companies has someone doing 3D development. You're using the SolidWorks CAD, our core product, to do development. Um, you're using our electrical to mix with that, and, and you're creating a product. And, and, and then where does it go? Right? Often it goes to a 2D drawing, and, and then it disappears, and then somebody else uses some other type of format to create whatever else they need. So how can we reuse that 3D data that you've um, spend so much time and so much energy, which is the core of your business often. How, how can we reuse that information in different departments, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales, purchasing, uh, who, quality, whoever it can be, how can we reuse that data effectively so that we're saving, again, time and money? And technical communi communication is a great example. So you're going to see one of the tools that we have for that, Commun Composer, which is a great product. Um, how we use the 3D model to do that. You're going to see different examples of, of what we can do with it. Um, and uh, and we'll, hopefully you'll see something that, uh, that resembles what you guys want to do or, or are doing today just differently in your enterprise. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Michel Cloutier. He's the Territory Technical Manager for Eastern Canada. And uh, he will be showing you an overview of the Composer product. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box uh, or under the chat box. There's a little type message here. You can put them in there. And at the end, if there's any questions, Michelle will address them either uh, live um, or if we have time or, uh, or individually afterwards. But please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to put your questions in the box. Uh, Michelle has been with SolidWorks for over 12 years, uh, has a great knowledge of these products, of how the evolution that we've seen for these products. And uh, he's going to take uh, about 40 to 45 minutes with you today to, uh, to give you an overview of Composer. Over to you, Michelle. All right. Well, thank you very much, and welcome, everyone, to this, uh, this uh, quick session today. Um, like Joelle mentioned, we're all here to discuss technical documentation. Now, when we talk about technical documentation, um, there's a number of ways people create those you know, illustrations, pictures, manuals, uh, instructions, 
there's a number of ways people are using it today. Um, typical process we see, you know, there's probably three of them. Typically, we'll, we'll see, and your you probably your company probably fits in, into one of them. Um, a lot of customers just take photos. You know, they go on the shop floor, they take a picture of someone putting something together, and they use the manuals and they make manuals out of those photos. Now, problem is, well, you have to make something first. So your documentation starts after you've actually created something and manufactured and assembled something. You cannot create the document earlier in the design, in the, in the manufacturing and design and manufacturing process. So it's very serial. The second thing we see a lot is people will reuse the Sadox drawings to send to their customers. Now, Interesting, uh, interestingly, I was actually at a customer just this week, and that's what they are doing. They're taking their, um, their assembly drawings and sending that to their customers, and the people there just told me two things. There's two things wrong with that, and that's coming from them. They said, first of all, there's too much information, there's too much detail, because when we do a uh, assembly drawing, we do it for the shop floor, the customer is not going to buy the components as is. Uh, an example they gave me is, you know, let's, let's take for a pump, for example. Well, we need all the bits and pieces of the pump in our drawing to show how to assemble it here, but if the pump breaks at the customer's site, they're going to order the kit. They don't need to know how the pump is put together, they just need to know how the pump fits onto the assembly. So they're just sending too much information out to their customer, which is confusing. The second thing which I found really interesting they told me was, you know what? We realized over time that our competitors are actually using our documents against us. They're using our, our, our detailed drawings to mimic and copy some of the, the methods we're using to put things together. So they they realize that it's actually going into their competitors' hands. Um, so, and, and that's an error to drawing. You just take what you have and you, you publish it. And that was one of the key issues they were they were having when we discussed that quite a lot. Now, the third thing, the third uh, way people typically create technical documentation is that they'll redraw what they need into a third-party software. You know, think of Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, whatever the, the case might be. They'll just redraw what they need for their, their documentation. And that obviously involves a lot of time and a lot of duplicate effort. Now, the idea with Composer is instead of using any of these, why don't we just use what we already have? The engineering department, uh, they already spent time and, and great deal of thinking and money to create really nice 3D models out of SOLIDWORKS. So why don't we use that and repurpose it using SOLIDWORKS Composer to actually create what we need in our documentation, create the, uh, the images, the JPEG, the bitmap, the PNG files. Um, there's another type of image if you're more inclined towards um, uh, e-commerce. Uh, there's also a vector type image that is very useful for e-commerce as it can be seen in, in the web browser very easily. And I'll show some examples of that. But you can then go even further with um, animation. You know, customers are telling me, yeah, okay, 2D paper documents, fine. I'd rather send a video. You know, it's, it's just easier to understand what to do on a video when you have access to obviously a way to consume that. Um, so there are different methods we can share that information, we can create that information using Composer. So we'll show, I'll talk about three different methods. First of all, we'll talk about how using Composer to create a standard type documentation, you know, hard paper format or a PDF file. Um, we'll go through that. I'll talk about the vector images and why it's, uh, it can be useful for e-commerce, for example. And also, finish off with some, you know, more interactive content, you know, like, uh, like an animation with arrows, with things flashing that actually, you know, puts the, the model, you know, front, front and center to, to know exactly what needs to be done on, on, that, on that instruction. So let's start with the first things. Uh, like I said, we're going to start with a, 
typical type of documentation, something we would use Composer to create the image and put the image in a, a layout and, and probably create a PDF out, out of it. So for that, I'm going to use something I've already started working on. Uh, so right now, my documentation is, right now it's in uh, Microsoft Word, but I want to have some images in Word so I can first cut down a text. And rather than put an image and rather than type in text so I don't have to translate anything, it's more, much more visual, right? So let's see how we can use Composer to actually create that type of documentation. So I'm going to change over here to, um, to my, my desktop. And actually, this is the documentation I've started working on. So as you see, um, this is a Word document. I've got some images, some instructions. If I zoom into this, uh, my second page here, let's just scroll down a little bit, you'll see that I've started documenting the steps. And obviously, step number six here is not up to date. I need to, you know, this is just a placeholder right now. So I need to update this image. So let's see how I created that content, that visual content inside of Composer. So now I'm going inside of Composer. So this is SolidWorks Composer. You'll notice that. I have my 3D model right inside of Composer. Now, the first question I get asked is, okay, so how did you go from SolidWorks to Composer and bring the model in? There's actually two methods. Out of SolidWorks, you could save it out as a Composer file. But what's great about Composer is if you have people dedicated to instructions and things like that, they can just open the SOLIDWORKS parts or assembly themselves. They don't need to have a seat of SOLIDWORKS. They don't need to know how to work SOLIDWORKS. They can simply open the SOLIDWORKS part assembly and other, other formats, as you can see. And then everything, the 3D model, comes into life inside of Composer. Now, when we do that, you, you'll, you'll also notice that we also handle all the assembly structure. So as you would see it inside of SOLIDWORKS, that's how you see it here. So, you know, all the assembly, the parts, everything's there just like it is in, inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now, what I'm going to do is, like I said, use Composer to create the content that's going to end up in my Word document. And as you can see here, I started creating some of that content. So you see here, I got step uh, three, four, five, six. I'll simply cycle through, and then I'll show you how to actually create and, and modify these so we can update this one, which is step number six. So like I said, step number six obviously needs to be uh, worked on, so that's exactly what we're going to do. First things first, um, the thing I like to talk about is how we can render the model. Now, if it's going to be a printed manual, you probably want to go with silhouette like this, uh, but there's also other modes like flat technical, which I like a lot as well. You know, kind of really distinct color, so that's, that's a nice mode. For this one, I'm going to use silhouette. And then I'm going to start creating my exploded views. Again, what's great is that the illustrator creates their own exploded view. I have access to the 3D model. I simply select the part, right click, and I drag. You know, I can simply zoom, pan, and rotate to reposition. If I like select this part, you see the little triads here. I select them and pull on them. Also, you know, benefit of having the feature tree here is that when I select something, it highlights in the tree. So my selection, I see my selection is my swirl valve. Uh, so if I want to take the assembly and move the whole assembly, I can actually just select the assembly from here and now grab all three of those components. The other benefit with Composer is that it's tailored to do exploded views. That's, that's where it's great for. Um, so if I want to do a linear explode view, I can window select all these three components. And in just one slide, you can see that very quickly, I can slide all of these three parts just like that. So very quickly, I'm starting to capture what I want in my step six. Now, Compared to the other views, I'm still missing some information. I want to add some arrows, something very, um, you know, that, 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 that shows really which, which direction to pull things. And all of that is built right inside of Composer. So I want to augment this with some arrows. 
So very easily, as you can see here, I can snap to the, the axes of, of the components. Now my arrow, quite obviously, is not pointing in the right direction, so I'm simply going to flip the arrowhead. I have full control over the opacity, make it you know, somewhat transparent or very opaque. As you can see, it, uh, it's also kind of covering some of the parts. I don't like that, so I'm going to disable the stay on top. So now you see the arrow actually is going through the parts. So it's not hiding anything behind them. The other thing too is that I want to make sure that people understand they need to turn the um, the tip here, you know, half a turn to to the left to take it out. Well, I'm gonna again use a this time a circular arrow, and just like before, it's going to snap to my geometry uh, and it's going to adopt the style here. So very quickly, I can drop this in. Um, I can scale it up or down just using the, the, the visual handles on the screen. Uh, maybe the arrowhead, I want to, you know, kind of play with that a little bit so I can really easily move everything. Uh, let's put it opaque and do some couple tweaks like the previous one. It's not the same orientation, so let's just flip the uh, arrowhead to the other side. And I'll simply control maybe the angle like this. Uh, disable the uh, stay on top and uh, one thing I'm going to also do is actually move it a little bit like this so I can easily move around the way exactly the way I wanted to show and that's how I, I like it so now that I'm, I'm happy with that I can simply update this view and now at this stage I'd be ready to maybe update my word document so from here, I'm going to simply save it out as the image I, I so choose. So um, as you can see, I got some different default profiles that's kind of set that's going to set the uh, the size of the images so it fits my my um, my document real well. And when I'm happy with that, I'm simply going to say, okay, I want to save as and what type of format I'm going to use PNG. And I'm going to override the image I already have here. I'm going to save, hit yes. Now, going back to my Word document, I could simply, from here, say I want to edit the length to these files. And if I remember correctly, it was step six. Let's update that. And going back to my document, you'll notice that now image number six, down to the uh, bottom right, has been updated. So I'm using Word here as uh, with linked images. So as soon as I change my image, I can update my Word document without having to reinsert a new image. Now the other thing we can do as well with Composer, and before I leave here, let's just make sure I've updated this so I don't lose my changes, is to detail, one thing I want to do here is to detail the inside of this because um, it's very important we don't put water on the little electric motor. Now this can be difficult to do, uh, but using Composer, we have a great tool called the Digger. The Digger can be used in different modes. As you can see here, it can be used simply as a magnifying glass. So if I want to point something out and make sure that it, it's very visible, I can do that very easily. But the other way we can use the, the Digger is to set it aside here and point to an area and then turn on the uh, onion skin mode. So now I can basically just peel away layers of this little design so we can see the interior of this part. And once I'm happy with that, I could create a, uh, a screen capture or I, I could go over here. Before I do the screen capture, I just want to set a, a white background so it uh, looks good. And when I capture this, now I can create a new image, and this actually now is it's just static. The image is static, while I can still move this around and create a new um, capture that I could then insert into my document if I wanted to. So the, um, the idea with Composer is really to go ahead and create those images really quickly. So I don't need to take a, you know, a camera, go on the shop floor, take pictures. I don't need to do all of that. I have access to the SOLIDWORKS files. It's not editing the SOLIDWORKS file. It's just consuming the SOLIDWORKS file so I can create my own exploded views the way I want them. 
And the other thing is, like I said earlier, there is no CAD required. So uh, someone that does illustration does not need to have SOLIDWORKS, does not need to know SOLIDWORKS. They just need to have access to the data so they can create their own exploded views the way they want them. So they don't have to go up at engineering and ask an engineer to create an exploded view, which you know they'll use, but probably they would do differently. So this is really flexible as, as a means of doing that. Now the second thing I mentioned earlier about the type of images was vector images. Um, we can use vector images different ways. Uh, one of the ways I've seen people use it more and more is for e-commerce, and I'll show why. Uh, because you can have, even though it's a 2D image, you can add interactivity to that to that image. So, for example, if you hover over a part, you know something highlights, like the the list in the bill of material. So, actually, I'll I'll show that example, um, and then we'll talk about how we update our documentation if our SolidWorks files update. So, if my my top assembly inside of SolidWorks there's a change, a revision. What happens to all the downstream, you know, images? You know, how do I handle that? So we'll go about doing uh, that example. So now let's uh, let's just head back into uh, Composer, and like I said, let's create a quick parts list for uh, this subassembly over here. So I'm going to start from step nine and simply create a new view, uh, which is going to be my um, part list. Um, I'm not going to use that arrow because that's really just for um, for instruction. I just want to have a parts list. Uh, let's just zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to grab the uh, the nozzle right here. Actually, the the nozzle assembly. I'm going to pull that out real quick. And because I love the uh, the, the linear explode so much, I'm simply going to reuse that. So now I got this little parts well. Exploded view, I want to create a part list for it. So built inside of Composer, we can create all of those build materials for those parts lists. I'm going to generate the bomb ID, which is going to, which is in turn going to enable me to show the uh, the, the the parts list itself. Now notice that I didn't type in anything. The description is already there, and I could have a number of different uh, properties in there because Composer all, not also not not just reads the geometry and the file structure, it also reads the metadata, meaning that things like description, material, part properties, part numbers, everything can be pulled and added to my uh, to my parts list here. Now the last thing I do want to to have here is obviously balloons. So I'm going to select everything and create my callouts. Really quickly, call outs appear on the screen. I have again full control, so I, I can change the size, make it bigger, smaller. I could even go ahead and change the color of these balloons. Uh, so there's just so many controls, and all of these controls can be set as styles, so that all your documentation is even if you have multiple people making the documentation, they all use the same types of arrows, they all say use the same types of balloons and whatnot. Now you see here it's aligned top and bottom. Again, a lot of flexibility about how I want to align this. I'm going to simply set it on the top here for um, for quick reference. Once this, it, once it's there, I'm actually going to use a tool some of you already might know from SolidWorks, the magnet light. So if you're a SolidWorks user, you uh, you might know about the magnet line. Um, Kind of an interesting story here is that the magnet line actually appeared inside of Composer first, and SolidWorks inherited the magnet line a few years ago. So using the magnet line, I can now just align the balloons just like I want, just to have something really nice and sharp. And once I'm done with that, I can save and update my parts list. Now, earlier I said about you know, e-commerce and why there's different types of image format. So the vector image format gives another level of control. Uh, so for example, you can change the width of the line. So you can play with these. So it just gives a lot more control over the output 
to have a real professional type looking document. So rather than just trying to explain that, let's just go ahead and save it and see the output itself. I'm going to save it out. Uh, there's multiple format, SVG, CGM, there's a few there. Um, what's great about these is that all of these formats are compatible with web browsers. So if I go in my output image, I double click the image I just created, you'll notice it's opening in, right now my default browser is Chrome, so it's opening right inside of Chrome. What's neat about this is that even though it's a 2D image, see what happens when I hover my cursor over one of the components. So if my cursor goes over one of these components, um, either the balloons, the component, or even if I hover in the tile block, not the tile block, the fill material itself, you'll notice that everything highlights on the screen. So this is, that's a good reason why it's really nice for e-commerce type. Uh, and I could even complement that with a, hy with a hyperlink. When I click on it, it's, it's taking me to the, um, you know, the, the, the cart so I can buy the, the part. The other thing, too, I want to highlight is when we look real close, you'll see what, what Composer did. And so if you use some professional software, you'll notice, see how the thickness of the line are thicker on the outside than they are on the inside, little things like that. Notice here how there's actually a little bit of shadow right underneath the uh, balloon line, the attached line. So we're actually treating, we're doing that automatically inside a composer. So very little touch-up is required to, uh, to do that. So very, you know, so now people using composer oftentimes will simply disregard or stop using any third-party software to do any type of uh, image editing. They don't need to because the quality is just there. Now, the, um, the other thing I, I need to do, and, you know, this is something that I said I was going to do, is, you know, everything changes, right? We, we all know that. Um, so I've used a SOLIDWORKS model to create my images, but what happens if I change the native SOLIDWORKS model? How do I treat the update process? So I'm going to go through that process with you and show you how we could uh, one of the methods we could do to, to update everything downstream. So I'll go back into SOLIDWORKS, actually where the, the, the native geometry came from, do a change there, and then go back into Composer and see how we treat the update process. So let's go ahead and do that. So switching, jumping back into SOLIDWORKS right now, as you can see, that's, uh, that's my, my original Power Painter inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I'm going to do not a big change, but still a change. Um, I'm going to change the, uh, the tip here from yellow to red. And notice also there's um, eight, uh, eight spars in, in it uh, rather than four. So it's, it's a stiffier, stiffier part. So I'm going to save that mm. and close my document. I don't really need to work on that anymore. Going back to Composer, and actually I'm going to go to my cover image uh, so that we actually see the change real clearly. How do we treat that? Well, it's actually fairly easy. Inside of Composer, you simply go ahead and say, okay, I want to update my document. Fine. Uh, Composer is going to ask you what document it, it is that changed. So I'm going to select the, uh, the, the updated document and simply hit update. And notice what happens on the screen. It's actually updating not only the model on the screen, but if I go over here and I start cycling through all the views I've created earlier, notice that all the views are already updated with the new geometry. Notice the, the tip. It's the tip with the eight spars. It's not the tip with the four. Um, in the cover image, you also notice that the, the color was different because it went from yellow to red. So all of my downstream images and, and views and steps, everything's up to date. Now, we still need to update my final documentation, which is my Microsoft Word document. So how do we go about updating all of and producing all of these images? So I'll go back into my workshop. And I'll say, all right, so I want to first off uh, 
save my cover image, right? Uh, because this is actually using a different resolution, so I'm going to save this one separate from the others, and that's going to be my cover image that I'm going to overwrite. But then for the instruction sheets and the little instruction images, I want to save all of them at once. I got the option to enable views, and what that what what that's going to do is that it's going to bulk save everything. So I got you know ten different images. I hit save once. I hit yeah, I want to replace everything, and you see it's already done. And I've updated like ten or twelve images in just a few seconds. If I if I look in my image folder, you'll notice that all of these images were all updated. And within a few seconds. So everything's done very, very quickly. Now, last thing I would need to do is if you're using Word, here I'm using Word, but you could be really using any any other type of, of lay or, or document uh, for that. But I can simply say, okay, I want to update all my images, hit OK, and then you'll notice that all my images inside of Word Everything is updated. So now the only thing I need to do is really to maybe create a PDF out of that or print it, and that's it. So that's um, that's the idea with with uh, with the changes. So the idea again, you know, I have something inside of SolidWorks. I use that to do my documentation. But what happens when there's a revision? I need to update my documentation so it's clear and people understand clearly what it is. Well, if you do a change inside of SolidWorks, you simply propagate that change down. The beauty is that you don't have to redo anything. You've, all those exploded views will simply update, and then you can put that into your Word document. So there's a lot less editing required. Um, you notice that with the, the, the vector type images, uh, we have a lot more control over the line weight that we can separate from the outside to the inside line of a part. Uh, the shadowing underneath the, the balloon attach lines to make it easier to understand and to see. Um, and then you, you just save a ton of time because when you're ready, you just say, okay, I want to save all of that. And it just creates all of those images that you can then repurpose for, uh, for whatever documentation you need. Now, the last thing I want to do is, is to talk more about interactive content. Again, more and more, you know, people are looking for videos or something they can they can watch on a touch screen or um, you know assembly instructions, for example, electronic assembly instructions. So we'll do the same example here, continuing with Composer and and see how we can we can tackle that task. So back to Composer, um, you'll notice that this is not only a still you know two D image type document. We can also create animations. So for example, if I just show what I've already created so far, there's a little animation playing of showing how to actually disassemble this the right way. And we're going to continue on that and show you how you could continue these steps going forward. So what I'll do here is that if you look down the bottom, you'll see the, you know, the, the timeline. And the idea is very simple. Um, so I'm going to say, well, I'm going to take these two parts and make sure that they're in position. And I'm going to drag my timeline to a second, one second later, select my, my uh, linear explode tool. Maybe I'm going to pull this over here and pull this one a little further. And just like that, I'm actually, I've actually animated this explode step, right? I simply grab the part and move them, and the composer will understand. We'll do the uh, we'll do the rest. Now from here, again, I'm going to capture my my keys, and maybe half a second later, I'm simply going to go from opaque to transparent. So again, what happened is that now I've already animated the explode, but also the fade out of this part. Now over here, I want to uh, zoom back into um, a, a closer shot of this. I'm going to move over here maybe, just capture my camera, maybe go a second later or half a second later, and 
go over here. So very quickly, you see now I'm trying, I'm, I'm going ahead and, and just animating all of this really quickly. So the idea here is, again, uh, as I'm doing that, I can easily just select what I want, um, you know, use my linear explode tool, pull things apart, just like that, uh, pull them out over here, let's say. And again, I've animated this, this step here of exploding. So very quickly, I'm able to do all of that using Composer to create those assembly instructions and and interactive documents and show how we can disassemble that using a video, for example. So this is just a good example of how we can use Composer for that. Now, a lot of people take that even a step further. So um, the ability to create those interactive documents and, you know, like, like the example that I have here. So this, as you can see, it's, it's Microsoft PowerPoint, but I've actually embedded the 3D uh, file, the composer file, right inside of my uh, PowerPoint document. I have access to the views, so I can cycle through these views. As, as you can see here, I didn't save my document just yet, so that's why I don't have this updated here. Uh, but we can go a step further as well. Again, um, this is actually the composer document embedded into a Microsoft PowerPoint file. Um, I have access to the model here. Actually, let's just um, simply going to hide the uh, in the viewport here. Just hide the paper. There you go. So I got the full 3D model right here, and you see here there's a button. So I select it, and I can see my next step for instruction. So basically, this is, has now become a step-by-step -step instruction that I, I could have accessible to the shop floor, and I could use that to help you know my 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 staff assemble or repair or do any of that uh, using composer now here's an example of a customer and how they implemented composer they use composer for their shop floor instructions so basically on the shop floor they have a um, a sheet with just a barcode about the um, the uh, assembly uh, station, and when the uh, the person responsible, they can simply go to that terminal. They have a, a, a barcode scanner, and by scanning the code on the sheet of paper, the instruction appears. And that's actually Composer. What you're seeing there, that's actually an image right from Composer. So this is step four of twelve. Uh, they have access to the actual 2D image with the parts list, very similar to the one I created earlier. Here's another example. This time it's the bill material with different, there's a coloring method. You know, they use color to separate the type of parts, type of components. Uh, so it's very clear. They, it's very easy to understand. Again, this image out of Composer. They also have access to the 3D model. Now, here, what they're doing is that they're making the free player available to get to the components. So if the uh, the person on the shop floor, they don't quite understand how this is put together, they have access to the 3D model on the shop floor, and then they went ahead and complemented all of that information with a standard uh, PDF file. Again, the images you see in this file is actually coming from Composer. Uh, and then they complement the, you know, this further with, you know, the tools they need to do the assembly, uh, maybe some uh, some spec sheets, you know, toward values and such. And they even have a little later, later on, we can see that they uh, they also have a little video uh, that they can load of, of someone they actually film putting it together. So again, that's a you know, a way people are using 3D Composer to document. Here they're using it internally to document the assembly process, but with manuals and things like that, there's just so many ways you can use it for your different types of documentation. So obviously we have, you know, customers using that. We've, we've been, you know, um, you know supporting this product for, for years now. 
And here's what you know some of our customers have to say about it. Um, you know, way more. Uh, you know, they, they just said it was much easier to create work instructions for the shop floor, and I had much more flexibility in terms of not having to wait on a particular phase with Composer. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. I, I think that's a great quote. You just need access to the CAM models, and then you can go ahead and, and go do your own, you know, documentation and structures. You don't have to wait for anything. And here's another another quote uh, I like a lot, um, you know, from uh, from from EAB Engineering. Now we use SolidWorks 3D models as input for documentation um, and can enjoy the benefits of faster, more more accurate, and more detailed images. So again, these are just you know quick quotes, but you know if you need to remember anything, you know it's just the way that you can use Composer to repurpose the CAD models for something more. And, you know, you've already spent a lot of time, a lot of effort creating those nice models. You know, Composer is just leveraging that for your instructions, and there's different types of instructions, um, but you know, whatever you're looking for as regards to the instructions, you know, Composer is the tool to help you get there. So I think uh, I think I'm I'm going to uh, let Joel uh, do the uh, the final comments. Um, there's I haven't seen any questions in the in the question box, but if if any of you get guys or uh, anyone attending, uh, you have any questions, any follow up questions, please you know that's why my email's there. Just ping me or, or Joelle, and, and we'll make sure we'll we'll get you an answer. Joelle. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Michelle. That was great, great information. So I. Um, Hope that you guys saw something in there that resembled what you're doing, what you want to do, how you want to do things differently, or things that you're not even thinking about doing today, but uh, gives you some insight into different ideas that would be uh, great to uh, implement. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to have a few ways of, of um, getting you some information if you uh, would like the recording of, uh, of this session, if there's somebody else at your company that uh, you would like to share this with. Um, that's one way of sharing the information. The other is, of course, everyone has a different type of documentation and a different way of doing things, and uh, the best way is always to uh, take a look at what you're doing uh, individually and seeing how our solutions could uh, help you particularly and your company particularly with your uh, with the objectives that you want for improvement uh, for uh, down the road. So in that sense, uh, you will certainly, uh, I'm sure, get a follow-up call from your uh, representative at your reseller who will uh, check with you if you've got any additional questions that you may have forgotten to ask um, or if uh, there's a, a follow-up meeting to be set up to have a, a more in-depth conversation with you about this solution. So please uh, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to them proactively if you want. Um, but they will uh, get this information and then be touching base with you just to see if there's anything that they can do. So a number of ways of getting the information. Uh, we appreciate your time this morning. We hope that you have a, a great end of uh, Friday and a great weekend and hope to see you on one of our other webinars that we will keep hosting uh, throughout uh, the remainder of the year. So hope to see you soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now. All right, bye.